tuning in. We welcome you this morning. For those of you who are here, boy, am I glad you're here. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you never change. And I thank you, Lord, that uh, your word tells us and shows us how to be content in every situation. So, Father, I just ask for peace for each one this morning, for contentment where we're at, and for joy as we seek your will today. Father, I ask for your healing in our country. I ask for your healing uh, for your people today. And Father, I pray against divisions and, and categories and, and uh, racism and, and everything that is uh, trying to separate us and, and and compartmentalize us today. Father, I pray that we can truly learn to love one another, maybe even all over again. And I thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Father's Day. Let's sing together. God is good. All the time, all the time, God is great. You know, um, I was thinking about Father's Day and the different fathers that I get to see throughout the day. And you guys do a great job in being encouraged. Be encouraged today for being a father. Ten thousand reasons.
Jesus is the light of the world. Let me put this right in here. Jesus is the light of the world. Sorry. I couldn't blow it out with a mask on. And what happens is he came to earth and he died for our sins, didn't he? And he was put in a tomb. Bye. John 3.16 says this. Bye. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now what's happening here is slowly but surely Jesus is taking that sin and he's taking it and putting it in here, the light of the world, and it sucks up all the sin that he died on the cross for us, boys and girls. And that's that's what happens in John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only one son that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If we ask Jesus into our heart and into our life, he will forgive us of our sins. Amen? Journey together 
We're going to first look at the history of Father's Day, and then we're going to look into the Bible at the roots of the beginning of Father's Day. And finally, we're going to end up with a challenge for each one of us to grow in our relationship with our Heavenly Father. Now, what comes to mind when you hear these words? Daddy. Dad. Pop. Papa. Pop. What comes to more, more, Mama. your mind? Father, right? Father. Father is the answer. Let's pray together. Will all the dads please stand up? And we want to pray especially for you today. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for each dad that came today. We want to bless them, Lord, and make them a blessing to their families. As they put you first, and Lord, as, as they are the men of the house, Father, that they serve you with all their heart and put you first. Lord, I pray for the moms and the children also, Lord, that each one will see their responsibilities and not shy away from it, but Lord, that you will encourage and lead us the way that you would have us go. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Praise God. Now, June 5th, 1908, in a West Virginian church, they sponsored the first event in honoring fathers on a Sunday morning service in memory of 362 men who died the previous year in December in an explosion at Fairmont Coal Company Mines. That was a one-time deal. But the next year in 1909, a 16-year-old girl from Washington, her name was Sandra Smart Todd. She was one of six children of a man that was a widower and he was a Civil War vet. He fought on, fought on both sides. She tried to establish an official equivalent to Mother's Day for a male parent. She went to her local church and churches around. She went to the YMCA. She went to the storekeepers. She went to the government officials to drum up support for her efforts. She was successful. Washington State celebrated the first statewide Father's Day on June 19, 1910. On that first Father's Day in 1910, churches had sermons across Spokane where they dedicated their service to dear old dad. Red and white roses were passed out in honor of the living and the deceased fathers in their congregation. The mayor of Spokane and the governor of Washington issued proclamations. Sandra found her calling. She would spend most of the next 60 years of her life in dedicating, pushing for Father's Day to be an official holiday. What an example for us. What an example. Do we have that conviction and the dedication in our lives for our Father? I'm talking about God in heaven, our Father who are in heaven. What are we spending our time doing? How much time do we devote to our Father who are in heaven? Where does our Father in heaven fit into our lives? 
Now, by God's perfect design, the first family began when he created the first man, Adam, and the first woman, Eve. God's word says in Genesis 1, 27, it says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And then it goes on in second in Genesis 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And he breathed into his nostrils and breath of life happened. The man became a living soul. Now God continued in Genesis. In Genesis 2 verses 15 through 25 let me paraphrase with, with you he puts Adam in the garden, man, Adam, and he's given a moral test, a moral test. It was a conscious and deliberate choice to believe and obey or disbelieve and disobey his creator's will. See, until that time, Adam was believing all that God said. He was believing God's word, spending time and fellowshipping with God every day, looking forward to it. But he was told clearly, just like you and I, he was told clearly that if he disobeyed God, he would reap moral disaster and experience death. Obedience and believing God's word are present as the governing principles in Adam's relationship to God. And it's for you and I today. This is true today. It wasn't good for man to be alone, so God made woman from man's ribs. So Adam and Eve, the first parents, were given a rule to follow as they lived in a beautiful garden called Eden. Who remembers the rule? Do you remember it? Not to eat the fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now we find that in Genesis 2, verses 16 and 17. Adam and Eve disobeyed God's one rule, and as a result, sin entered God's perfect world. Every person who has been born after Adam and Eve, that's all of us and people before us, were born with sin in our hearts. That sin keeps men and women, boys and girls, from living a life that pleases God. As a result, sin has affected God's perfect design for what we know God's will that he created family to look like. The Bible is filled with fathers. Let's try some, some trivia about fathers. First one. Which father almost sacrificed his son in obedience to God? Anybody know that answer? Abraham. Very good. The second one. Who is Solomon's father? David. Very good. Who had twin boys? Isaac. Who is the first father on earth? We just said it. Adam. Whose son became the 12 tribes of Israel? Jacob. 
What was the name of John the Baptist's father who was silenced by God until John's birth? Zechariah. And who is Jesus' earthly father? Joseph. Very good. And finally, which father lost all his children the same day but later received more children as a blessing from God? Job. Now, some of these fathers were good examples of status. And some of these fathers, these men, were not good fathers. No one was perfect and no one was all bad. When a dad does not follow God's plan, this hurts the whole family. The same is true for us today. We know men that are good fathers to children and maybe we know some men that have not been good fathers to their children. If we don't know these men personally, we can read about them on the newspaper or the internet or see them on the news. Some children have never met their fathers. Or they have lost their fathers through death. And sometimes they no longer live in the same house as the rest of the family because of a divorce. Some dads are not always at home because they're out bravely serving our country and go to other countries to protect our freedom for long periods of time. But God's plan for family is for a child to have loving fathers and mothers. And that will take care of their children. They'll take care of their children. Parents are supposed to teach their children to how to love God, how to love God and live a life that is pleasing to God. Bringing them to church and being that example of going to church is so very important. If we know our fathers, we need to praise God and give thanks. Even if our dad is not perfect and has made bad choices, we need to show our thanks and appreciation for our dads and let them know we love them before it's too late. Psalm 103, verses 13 and 14 says this, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. He knows how we were formed, and he remembers we are dust. A human father who is not controlled by sin loves his children and has compassion on his children. If an imperfect earthly father can have love and compassion for his children, how much more does our perfect heavenly father love us? Isaiah 64, verse 8 says this, Lord, you are our Father. We are like clay, and you are the potter. Your hands made us all. He's our creator. He made us all. He made you the way you are, the dad of the family, the mom of the family, the children of the family. God has created each man, each woman, each boy, each girl to have a relationship with him. God deserves and desires to be our fathers. The same problem we inherited from Adam and Eve keeps us from a relationship with him. But we have hope. For John 3.16 says this, 
For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, Jesus, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's my dad's favorite verse. You and I can have a relationship with God the Father. By believing that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and was buried and rose again, once a person believes by faith that Jesus paid the price for his or her sin, he or she becomes a child of God. He's a father. As a child of God, every person has an everlasting father. Each one of us need a better relationship with our Heavenly Father. None of us have a perfect relationship. We need to grow each and every day in our relationship. He's calling us. Oh, how he wants a relationship with each one of us. Isaiah 6 says, For to us a child is born to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Our Heavenly Father will never leave or forsake his children, Hebrews 13, 5, 6. Having an Everlasting Father gives us comfort because we know no matter what happens in our life, look around what's happening around us. No matter what happens, I'll say that again, no matter what happens in our lives, we can trust God to take care of us. A loving Father will do. Acts 17, verses 26 and 27, it says, From one man he made every nation of men, that they would inherit, inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the time set for them in the exact place where they should live. So God did this for man. So they would seek you and I would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he is not far away from each one of us. Each one of us today has a different, ex different experience with our families. As we mentioned before, you need to praise the Lord if you know and have a godly father and mother. And praise and thank God for it that gift. God will help you develop into a man or woman he desires you to be through their experiences. Let me encourage everyone today to keep your eyes on Jesus and walk with him each and every day so that you will not live a life controlled by sin. If your experience in your family has been a difficult one, you can find peace and comfort in God the Father. If you have never placed your faith in Jesus for forgiveness of your sins, today this is the day you can begin your relationship with God the Father. If you are a dad and you want to become more in your family, more God will help you today if you only ask. And it's the same with moms. And it's the same with children, too. This all begins with your relationship with your Heavenly Father. All relationships change for the better if we put God first and work on our relationship with God. Our first love. Let this be the best Father's Day you've ever had by asking God into your heart, or maybe you've done that. Maybe you've asked God into your heart. But listen for God to talk to you right now. Make him first in your life. 
Don't say, I have to do this or I have to do that. Put him first. Many things can get in your way. It would be something that maybe God needs to point out to you today in your life. And let your, your Father, who art in heaven, speak to you. You can celebrate Father's Day knowing that you are a child of God. You have a Father in heaven. God is our Father. He wants to have a better relationship with you today. He desires that with all of you, all of us, every single one. Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, I asked you, Lord, to come into each one of our lives, work a miracle in families, knit them together, help them see that you need to be first in their lives. Help them understand how much you love them. Dear Jesus, we thank you. And we give you all the honor and glory and praise in Jesus' precious name. Amen. sin separates us from God. Um, not completely. In the uh, Old Testament, he, he led them by fire, uh, by cloud of smoke. And over time, man wanted to put him in a box, wanted to build a temple, wanted to build a home for him. Well, how do you contain God? But God allowed Solomon to build a temple. And at the completion, Solomon prayed, it's a long prayer in uh, Second Chronicles and uh, chapter 6. And I encourage you to, to read that. And he asked for God to answer those prayers to two of the people. When they prayed to the temple, when they prayed to the God who was in that temple. And they they had in the temple the Holy of Holies behind a huge veil curtain to separate God's presence from the people. And only the high priest could go in there. And God answered Solomon's prayers. And this is from 2 Chronicles 7, starting in verse 14. Then if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and forgive their sins and restore their land. My eyes will be open, my ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. And that was the temple. But that wasn't God's plan to have a, a barrier between him and man. And he sent his son. And as Jesus was here, he said that he would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. And by his death on the cross, at the moment of his death on the cross, the, the barrier between man and God between the holy holies and people was torn in two from the top, from God himself. And I'd like to share 
um, from Ephesians in chapter 2, starting in verse 19. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together, we are his house. Built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, and the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling place where God lives by his spirit. So, you know, now the temple, we are the temple of God. God is with us. I want to encourage you today that you have open access to the Lord of Lords, the Lord who made everything in control of everything. And you know, when Adam sinned in that garden, it wasn't a surprise to God. He knew we would. He knew every human he created would sin. But he always offers forgiveness and, ex and is welcomes us back with open arms. And I think right now in our country we need to pray for healing. We need to seek his face. Are you okay Not only from diseases, but from hatred. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and uh, talk to him. Our Father, Heavenly Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you that you are our Father. Today especially we remember you. We remember our fathers and those men who have been father figures to us, who have guided us, who have helped us, who have been examples to us. Lord, we thank you for the ones that are here, and we thank you for the ones that have gone on from here. Lord, we come to you today, and we seek, we seek healing for our country, for our land, for our world. Not only from, from disease, but from hatred. Lord, let us learn to respect and love each other as equals. And Lord, we praise you, we thank you for all that you are. And Lord, as a father, I ask that you would to bless our children. That you would pour out your spirit into them. And Lord, make your home in their hearts. And strengthen them and guide them. And Lord, wherever they may go, that you would remain with them. Lord, we just thank you for that promise that you will. Lord, all those who are battling sicknesses, pains, who have surgeries coming up, Lord, we lift up to you, Lord. We pray, Lord, for guidance for the doctors. And Lord, that you would just always be with them and bring them peace. That you would relieve pain. Lord, that you would be with family members and bring peace to them also. Lord, we thank you for the beautiful day outside. Lord, as we are your temple, Lord, grow in us. Strengthen us. Let us learn to love as you love. We ask all this, Lord, in your name, Jesus. Okay. 
close with his hand. Leading on the everlasting arms. Thank you.